if, if we talked to the Alden nine years ago and said, by the way, at some point you're gonna be playing Han Solo, right. what, what do you think he would make of that news? I think he would have been pretty amped about it. I think he would have been pretty excited about it. I waited a long time for a shot like this. What do you think? Uh... Well, what do you know? At this point, when we're careening towards the, the release where the public actually finally gets a chance to see this film, yeah. is, it, is it an exhale of relief at this point? Because you've you know, debuted the film in Cannes and other premieres. Yeah. Press have seen it, people like it, which yes. is a huge sense of relief. Absolutely. I think, yeah, it is a big sense of relief. I've been on it for about two years. Um, I auditioned for it in 2015. I mean, I've kind of been on it for even longer. So just the fact that people like it and it's like the enthusiasm that we've had and just kind of finally getting to release the movie to people is such a wonderful feeling yeah. and getting people to enjoy it and have that adventure. When you were uh, first up for this in the, in the, kind of the screen test period, um, I mean, it's the opportunity in some ways of a lifetime, but it's also mm -hmm. one of these kind of like opportunities that it's, needless to say, a tough act to follow. Uh -huh. um, did anybody in your life say, this is a bad idea? Uh, like, like right. I mean, this is a no-win scenario. Don't, don't go down this road. No one said that, you know. No one brought that up. But I wanted to know, it was really important to me, like, I think there's a big difference between finding yourself in something and knowing all along that you chose it. So right. I was auditioning for it. And I was kind of like, I really like this so far. I'm very excited about this. But I need to make sure that I'm doing this really because I want to. Because right. if you said, I'm actually not gonna do it, everyone would think you're crazy, your sure. agents would just basically quit. And you'd be <laughs> you know, Han Solo, what more do you right, want? <laughs> exactly. So I went on this trip during the audition process and just like spent a lot of time and really made sure that I, I basically wanted to make sure that there wasn't some voice in me that went like, don't do this. Right. Um, and, and there wasn't, you know, because if, it, if there was that voice, then I would have had to deal with it and not done it. But if there, there wasn't, and I really did want to do it, I love the people I was working with, I love the take on the character. Um, the only person who said don't do it was when they interviewed Harrison Ford, and they said, <laughs> do you have any advice for whoever takes on this role? And that's what he said. Right. But there's an old showbiz thing that the best thing to tell somebody who asks how do you get in showbiz is don't, right. because the people who will accept that aren't the people you want in it. Like the people who are gonna right. hear that and fight and go anyway are the people you want in. So let's, let's talk about sort of the approach to this because you have this amazing script from Lawrence Kasdan and John Kasdan to work off of. Yeah. You also have this body of work that Harrison Ford created yeah. in these original films. Yeah. Um, at a certain point were you kind of like, I need to stop watching the original trilogy and just sort of yeah. work off of this material and not let it get too in my head. I mean, give me the sense of the balance between imitation and making it your own. So I didn't look at any of it while I was auditioning. Okay. I think maybe I watched A New Hope after like my third screen test or something. Um, and <clears throat> I got the part very, like months out from when we actually filmed it. So yeah, I basically absorbed everything I could from the original movies. I watched episode one through Force Awakens, which was what was out at the time. Um, learned about the Star Wars universe uh, and just kind of like absorbed everything I could of Harrison, of Han Solo, of the, of the whole world so that by the time you're getting even remotely close to filming, you put all that aside. Yeah. And also, you know, it's a very different guy in this movie. You're meeting him at a very different time in his life. He has a lot of qualities we don't associate with Han Solo. Like, you know, he's a dreamer, he's kind of idealistic, and these aren't things. So that's kind of the great craftsmanship of the Kasdans is that they created the longest possible arc for the yeah. character. But it means that he starts in a very sort of not that Han Solo-y kind of vibe. So yeah. your job becomes being true to this guy where he's at now and making those scenes like feel real and alive, as real as you can. That being said, is there like one particular mannerism that you felt like was important to yeah. bring along to this? There's a lot. I mean, there's a host of them. I don't want to name them because I don't want that to be the experience of watching right. the movie. With the drinking game watching. That's <laughs> right, every time I point. <laughs> Do you have a favorite line from original trilogy, Han Solo. A part of me loves like when he kind of has to wrestle with like the craziest Lucas yeah. dialogue. Like you could, you look strong enough to pull the ears of a Gundark. Like, right. he, somehow, he somehow makes it work. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Any particular ones that strike your fancy? I, I, my two favorite ones are not verbal. I mean, my okay. two favorite ones are basically ah and woohoo. So it's when he's <laughs> pinned up against the wall in the, in the, um, 
in the Death Star and they're cornered and he just starts running at the, <laughs> oh, totally. the stormtroopers and gets surprised. Screaming. Yeah. I remember that thrill. I remember how exciting that was as a kid to yeah. see that. We talked about meeting Harrison. Uh, Ron Howard comes on board. George Lucas immediately comes to comes the Comes to visit the first day. Amazing. First day, incredible. Um, yeah. Give me a sense of what the interaction was. Is that again, just sort of tell me what you want, oh master? Yeah, or yeah, just, yeah. I mean, I mean, he came in and talked to us very briefly. Um, we were really shooting. I mean, we were shooting the scene. It wasn't like a lunch in the middle of the day. It was him actually visiting and watching while we're shooting. It was also the first day of shooting after the hiatus. Um, and then I got to sit down with him a couple weeks ago at Skywalker Ranch and just talk to him about the character and about Star Wars in general. And of course, you know, we all know this, but he was, his just sort of ideas, he's doing this museum that sounds so cool. Um, and his just ideas about the function of storytelling. I mean, yeah. I would bastardize what he said, but it's really brilliant. And I think, you know, we all owe him a real debt of gratitude. You know, we are, we are working in this sandbox that he built and in such a brilliant way and with this kind of depth and um, it's, he made this up, you know, he made all of it up and we continue to do all this. Some, some hot button uh, questions I think only the guy that plays Han Solo could answer. Sure. Okay. Give me a sense of this. Uh, Han or Han? What is the... Han. Well, George says Han, Lando obviously says Han, Leia says Han and Han, but Harrison Ford says Han. And that's what you so go by. So if I'm, you know, but you have to go. It's not like in the first half of my life I said Alden, and now I say Alden. So <laughs> you know, you kind of have to, you stick with that. Okay. Same is true of Falcon. Okay. Um, <laughs> did Han or Han Solo shoot, shoot first? first? Yes. Without a doubt. Yeah, without a doubt. <laughs> it's just who he is. It's what, yeah. he, okay. what he would do for sure. Well, he knows. You know, he knows that it's not going to go well. Right. It's not like he did it just to be no, cold. Not a he asshole. He's just, he, yeah. he knows that at that time in his life, he knows the ins and outs of this world. Okay. And you know, one thing that's cool about this movie is like that cantina scene was always my favorite part of the Star Wars universe. And this movie is really an extrapolation on that. Yeah. So it's kind of this great adventure story that takes place in the underworld, the kind of gangster world of the Star Wars universe and is very, um, very, has that kind of edge to it. And it's not, you know, all the other movies are kind of light versus dark and this kind of moral, very clear moral boundaries. Right. Whereas this is kind of, who is a good guy? Who is a bad guy? Who can you trust? Um, which I think distinguishes it and makes it a lot of fun. Totally. Um, Han, a uh, scoundrel or a heart of gold at, at the heart of it? I think both. I think one thing that's fun about the character is that there's so many things. Right. We all sort of think of him as this swashbuckling, swaggery cowboy. And yet you look at the scenes with Leia and he's pretty, you know, he's like a, he's pretty insecure. Right. So there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of dimension. I think that's what makes it. He's the most human. In what does the inside of a Tauntaun smell like? I don't know. You I have there. no idea, but no. not good. <laughs> Apparently, <laughs> by all counts. Chewy incidentally smells great because they wash those suits in um, in shampoo and conditioner uh, the yak hair suits so he actually smells really good oh, it's beautiful it's yeah, yeah. Um, who is cooler at the end of the day Han or Lando it depends on what part of the moment you're you know you're looking at right? okay so in this movie Han still cutting his teeth in a way. Right. Um, so he's so right now Lando has a bit probably, of an advantage, but yeah, probably. But then some stuff happens over the course of this film that I think might change that. And then also, you know, uh, later on, like in Empire, Lando's like not the most reliable. Lando does some pretty uncool stuff. <laughs> right. So, you know, yeah. Uh, what about Do uh, Donald or Alden? Who's cooler? Donald. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of talk about sort of what the next anthology story, right, a Star Wars story would, uh, could or should be, whether it's yeah. Obi-Wan or Lando or Boba Fett, et cetera. Uh, as a fan, mm -hmm. is there one that you would be curious to see? I really like this one. I mean, honestly, because I think this one is the most germane and organic because right. there's so many things that are mentioned in the original movies. There's such an actual backstory to fill in. There's so many, you know, between his relationship with Lando or the ship or, other things, chewy, you know, and so there's, it to me lends itself more, most organically to this. Yeah. Um, whereas I think you would have to sort of kind of create 
you have to be drawing on, you'd have to be making up more right. with the other one. Okay, uh, just a, a quick follow up on the, uh -huh. the Lando relationship because yeah. so many people were, are, were intrigued and, and it really pays off, I think, in the sort of see the, the genesis of this complicated relationship yes. between your two characters. Yes. Did you spend much time with Donald prior to this? Can you talk sort of about like what you guys were keen on establishing and the rapport, the rivalry, the friendship? what you're trying to convey in this one? I think all those notes kind of came pretty uh, naturally. You know, like he, we read for the movie, I had the part and we, we did a bunch of screen tests together. Um, and we had such a kind of immediate rapport. I mean, I was just with him and it's just like, I have so much fun with him. Yeah. He's really, has a lot of fascinating ideas that are interesting for me to like, you know, I like to ask him about it. And, um, and he's just like, we just kind of get along. We just really do get along. And so doing those scenes with him was pretty effortless and pretty fun. Yeah. yeah. One crazy uh, aspect that happens at the end of the film that, that caught me by surprise is uh, Darth Maul make, yes. makes an appearance. Yes. Um, so we were talking before about prequels. Yes. Were you surprised about that aspect? I mean, one, one of the cool things I think about that for the fans is it kind of embraces the expanded universe for the yes. first time in a real concrete yeah, way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, were you surprised when you saw or heard of that aspect? And Definitely, that? yeah, and in the script it didn't say who that was, so oh, nobody really? knew until way late in the game. But I think it's really cool because, you know, among the things that were established in the prequels, he's one of the coolest things. Yeah. I remember as a kid, like, he's a great villain. And so bringing him back into this world, and then of course, like, the Empire and these crime syndicates are in bed with each other. Right. So of course they are. So it's kind of, you know, and as much as, uh, you know, um, Dryden Voss and Crimson Dawn in this movie are like its own sort of invention. I don't think they appear in anything else. Right. There is like an established thing in the expanded universe of Black Sun, I think it is, right. and kind of these five crime syndicates like the Mafia. So it does in a way tip its hat to that. There is like in a way it feeds into it. Um, you're gonna get hopefully some much needed rest now that the, yes. the tour, you've traveled the world on this one. That's right. As but yes. it's a Star Wars movie, you don't do it small. No, that's right. How do you kind of navigate a career post Han Solo? Honestly, like one thing I'm really grateful for and lucky in, is in the fact that I started, you know, when I was 14. So right. I've had like 15 years almost of working and there isn't some new approach. Like the thing that I've looked to since my first film with Coppola was like, who's the director? You know, that's to me everything and, and a great part and so there is no like trying to sustain any kind of new level of recognition yeah. or any kind of thing like that. Um, it's just what's the next movie that, that a director I really love is doing. So there's the perception of like where somebody's career is at or what how big the movie they're in is or whatever. But the people within those narratives are living lives four months out of the year. Right. That's why to me I always think of doing some cheesy movie I don't want to do. That's four or five months out of your life every single day. Yeah. And it seems pretty draining. So no matter what happens, whether the movie's successful or if it works or if it whatever, if you choose people that are inspiring to you, you spend four months with those inspiring people every right. day. And that's so much more enriching than a, a, a high score on Rotten Tomatoes, right. you know? <laughs>